Welcome to Electrified, it's your host, Dylan Loomis. So Tesla Raj on Twitter shared this video of the sound noise in the new Plaid Model S. Now, of course, it's tough to really tell with the sound coming through a microphone and then over the internet, but I think you get the idea that relative to that noisy shop when the door was closed, it was definitely much quieter. But Elon did respond and say that new HVAC firmware is coming soon that will make it even quieter. Now, how soon is anybody's guess, but I would hope that soon still meant within the next, you know, three to six months and not into next year, but... We'll have to wait and see. Pope of Muscanity tweeted, are we getting close to the Tesla home HVAC system? To which Elon had a few replies. First, he said, oh man, home HVAC that is super energy efficient, quiet, and purifies the air would be great. We developed it for the car, but it can be scaled up for home use. He continued, most people have no idea just how good the Tesla air purification system is literally 10 times better than any other car. Now that 10X is certainly arbitrary and some people would argue about the Mercedes EQS, but more on that in a moment. And then finally, maybe we should advertise informationally just so people know stuff like this exists. Now we actually have a lot to unpack just from these three tweets. So let's start with the most recent one talking about advertising informationally. Now, in case you're not familiar to date, Tesla has had a $0 advertising budget. Now, Tesla does spend some money and they do some things with marketing. Think of marketing like a larger umbrella and then advertising is one element under that larger umbrella that is marketing. I think this right here does a great job of differentiating marketing from advertising. If you think of marketing as a pie, the whole marketing pie can be divided into advertising, market research, media planning, public relations, community relations, customer support, and sales strategy. Advertising, while the most in your face slice of the pie, is still only one slice of the marketing pie. So once again, historically, Tesla has spent some money on marketing activities, but that advertising element has historically been zero. And this debate has been hashed out many times over the years, so we don't need to get into it now. But what I will say is what Elon said about advertising informationally is a departure from what most traditional automakers especially do when it comes to their advertising. Now, if you think about Ford advertising or Audi or any other automaker, you basically need to think of slow motion angles, the car looking its very best in a super scenic place, people looking at it, admiring it, people being happy, etc. But you don't really learn a lot about the product, whereas what Elon is possibly warming up to and beginning to consider would be information advertising, basically educating the public about the features that they have available. Now, for me personally, this decision to do this really hinges on one factor. If Tesla feels like they can handle more demand, then absolutely go ahead and advertise informationally. But if they are still supply constrained, meaning if they educate people who become more aware to all of the benefits of Tesla, that's going to lead to increased demand. Well, if they can't fulfill that demand, then why would they spend the money to bring that demand in now when they could just wait until the future where maybe they need to pull that demand lever and they've ramped up their supply capacity to meet that demand. And then at that point, they're able to take on new demand from educating the public to what they really have going on. But I do have to say, this conversation is far more nuanced than that. Of course, on this channel, I try to break it down as simply as possible just to help you guys think through these things. But the reality is there's way more to the story that really needs to be considered. And it's definitely not a black and white decision, but let me know what you guys think. Should Tesla start advertising informationally or should they wait until some future time. So kind of sticking along the same lines, but jumping up here to most people having no idea how good the Tesla air purification system is. This is actually something that I would really love to see them educating the public about, even if it wasn't in a formal advertising capacity, just having a team or a website where they put out information that actually educated people. They don't have to pay for it. They have a great social media following. They just need somebody to run that division and start disseminating the proper information. But this air purification 
purification system is such a big deal that so many people overlook. According to WHO, the World Health Organization, air pollution kills an estimated 7 million people every year worldwide. Nine out of 10 people breathe air that exceeds WHO guideline limits containing high levels of pollutants, with low and middle income countries suffering from the highest exposures. From smog hanging over cities to smoke inside your home, think of all the wildfires in California over the years, air pollution causes a major threat to health and climate. The combined effects of ambient, outdoor, and household air pollution cause about 7 million premature deaths every year, largely a result of increased mortality from stroke, heart disease, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, lung cancer, and acute respiratory infections. And the massive problem here is a lot of these pollutants in the air are invisible. You can't see them. If you think about all the emissions from tailpipes on the roads that oftentimes you can't see unless it's like a big truck doing a coal rolling situation, well, that's part of the problem is we're not even actively thinking about what the air quality on the roads is really like, but the truth is it's much worse than we would like to imagine. Back in 2016, Tesla actually did a test on the Model X and the bioweapon defense mode. As Tesla knows that according to WHO, it is now considered the world's largest single environmental health risk, what is air pollution. Back then it was only about 3 million people dying annually as a result, and now the WHO has it at about 7 million million just a few years later, which back then it was already more than twice the number of people that die in vehicle accidents every year. Because of all this, Tesla developed a HEPA filtration system capable of stripping the outside air of pollen, bacteria, and pollution before they enter the cabin and systematically scrubbing the air inside the cabin to eliminate any trace of these particles. Tesla wanted to ensure that it captured fine particulate matter and gaseous pollutants, as well as bacteria, viruses, pollen, and mold spores. So basically what they did, they put this Model X in a large bubble, which was contaminated with extreme levels of pollution, 1,000 micrograms per meter of PM 2.5 versus the EPA's good air quality index limit of 12 micrograms per meter. So Dylan, in English please, you got it. The term fine particles or particulate matter 2.5 PM 2.5 refers to tiny particles or droplets in the air that are two and one half microns or less in width. The widths of the larger particles on that spectrum in the PM 2.5 size range would be about 30 times smaller than that of a human hair. And the EPA has established some air quality standards and for short term or 24 hour daily average, it's 35 micrograms per cubic meter of air and the long-term standard or annual is 12 micrograms per cubic meter of air. So as you can see on the left, they have the PM 2.5 concentration in micrograms per cubic meter. And then on the X axis, they have time since the activation of bio defense mode in minutes. So as you can see, when they closed the doors of the Tesla and activated the bio defense mode in this pink line, essentially minutes, less than one minute after activating it, it decreased the particulate concentration concentration in the air from about 800 all the way down to almost zero in about two minutes. And this gray area is essentially the level of the particulate matter in the ambient air outside of the Tesla. And this was the technology iteration about five years ago, so presumably this has only increased since then. Now to date, this bioweapon defense mode has only been in the Model S and X, but as you can see, January of this year, we learned that the Giga Shanghai Model Y actually now has bioweapon defense mode as well. And people have been asking Elon to get this in the Model 3 in the United States as well. But to my knowledge here in the United States, it's still only in the S and X. If I am wrong, please correct me. If any of you out there with a 3 and Y have this, please let me know. Now, like I mentioned earlier, some Mercedes EQS fans would argue that this 10X figure 10 times better than any other car is completely arbitrary and not accurate. Reason being the EQS is supposed to have a really good filtering system. It prides itself with the largest HEPA filter in the automotive industry about 10 liters, just under three gallons of filter volume. And look, we don't need to argue which is better, Tesla or the EQS. Let's just say those two are gonna be close to the gold standard, 1A, 1B, who knows? And then maybe the rest of the auto industry is trailing behind significantly. And the last thing I wanna say about this home HVAC system that Elon keeps tweeting about every now and then, I would not get your hopes up anytime soon. The main reason being this, if you think about all of the problems that the Tesla solar installations have caused due to the complexity of homes and training people on how to install the solar roof. Well, 
those similar issues, maybe on a smaller scale, but still to some degree, they're going to have to do the same to train people to install this new Tesla home HVAC system. So long term, you know, three, five years into the future, absolutely, this should 100% become a reality. But if you're thinking that this tweet means in the next few months, we're gonna start to see Tesla have some of these offerings, I wouldn't be so sure. This is something that we're just going to have to be patient for, but I really think that it will be worth the wait. And to wrap it up today, I wanna to talk about one last thing. So last night, Rob Maurer on Tesla Daily talked about Tesla stock and what's going to help it break out or cause it to break out. Well, I just wanna add one thing to that conversation. So I think people often overlook the macro picture and the rotation that's been happening out of growth stocks and into value stocks. So I wanna show you a few things. As you can see, over the last six months, Tesla's down about 4%. Over the last six months, NEO is down about 0.7%. Open door technologies past six months down 33%. CRISPR therapeutics over the past six months down 15%. QuantumScape over the past six months down 56%. So what I'm showing you is that over the past six months, these high growth companies have all been performing negatively. Now, of course, each company has specific factors that have attributed to some degree to the stock performance, but in my opinion, it's often the macro factors, once again, the transition from growth to value that has been taking place over the past few months that is causing these specific companies to be depressed. And part of why I've built this thesis is because of this. So Lynn Alden shared an excellent article. If you guys don't follow her, you need to start doing that yesterday. But she talks about growth and value being historically cyclical. So if you look at this chart, it shows the Russell 1000 value index divided by the Russell 1000 growth index. So when the line is up or above, of the zero mark, it means value was outperforming. When the line was going down, it means growth was outperforming. So the timelines when this red line is below the zero means growth is doing well, and up top means value is outperforming. So remember this, over the last 10 years from about 2010 to 2020, growth has outperformed and it became very steep toward the end of 2020. Well, what happened the last time something like this happened? If you go back, you can see around 2000, growth was wildly outperforming. The valuations of growth stocks significantly outpaced value. And then over the next five years, what happened? value flipped the tables. And it stayed that way for almost, you know, between five and seven years. Now, no, you can't just extrapolate this and say, well, for the next seven years, value is going to destroy growth, but it's absolutely possible because guess what? History often does repeat itself and there's reason behind it. So look, money tends to pour into what has been doing well. When value does very well as a factor, for example, investors and institutions will happily put more money into value stocks and value funds because human nature tells us that people chase return. But eventually the valuations on those value stocks aren't that cheap anymore, so that strategy then underperforms. This is exactly what has happened with Tesla. Basically, there was like seven years where Tesla stock did nothing. And then all of a sudden, it fit about seven years of performance into you know a six month period where the stock shot up in a parabolic way. And then money piled in, chasing that type of return. And what happened was Tesla's valuation definitely outstripped its actual revenue numbers. And now you have to add to the mix inflation, which is becoming more and more of a concern. Yes, the Fed is saying it's transitory in nature, meaning it's not going to last, but what do they know, you know? So right here, value stocks perform better in high inflation periods, which we could be entering into, and growth stocks perform better during low inflation. Why is this? Think about it. Inflation means the prices of your goods and everything rises. So if the prices of that stuff rises, consumers are going to have less money to spend on discretionary or higher growth stuff like a Tesla or a luxury vehicle. Whereas when inflation is rising, people are still going to have to pay for their utility bill and the things that they need like food on an everyday basis. So those value or more stable type stocks are going to perform better relative to the growth stocks. So the point here being, you have to remember that stock price movement is not just relative to what the company is doing, Oftentimes, and I would argue more often, it has more to do with the macro environment that is causing these moves. So you cannot sleep on the macro space and expect to be an excellent investor. And the last thing I just wanna show you, so Amazon did $386 billion in revenue in 2020. Right now, their market cap is about 1.7 trillion. So if you do the math, that's about a four times multiple, meaning that their market cap is about four times as big as their revenue in 2020. Now, people love to compare Tesla to Amazon, so that's what we're gonna do. So Tesla did about $31 billion in revenue in 2020. 
Right now, Tesla's market cap is 575 billion. Doing the math, that's about an 18 times multiple, meaning their market cap is 18 times bigger than their revenue that they did last year. Now, sure, you could argue Tesla has more growth potential than Amazon over the next decade and beyond, but the point here is that, guys, we need to be patient. It's going to take some time for Tesla to grow into its lofty valuations. And all investing is, is finding the best opportunity. So like I said, there could be nothing wrong with Tesla, but from a revenue multiple standpoint, there could be better opportunities elsewhere. And that is not a reflection on Tesla. It's just saying that, hey, their stock price had a really strong run up over the course of 2020. And now it's going to take some time to have another one. So just be patient. It's going to be okay. Tesla is going to be one of the biggest companies on the planet. We just have to have the right perspective. But thank you guys for watching. Please take a second to like this video if you did. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and a big thank you to everybody on the next screen.